Hey everybody, Nick here again. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Maybe it's around Christmas time, maybe you got a brand new amp, a practice amp. And I've seen a lot of people asking on different forums, on Facebook, and even on the channel over here on my Blackstar thing, if you can use a practice amp for playing with a small practice amp that's meant to be small, usually kind of cheap for the purposes of playing at a low volume, but usually have a decent sound, if you can use one of those for shows and for rehearsals with your band. So I'm here to help you with that because I've had a lot of information in it, so stay tuned. So if it's your first time here again, my name is Nick. I'm a guitar player from Detroit. I do some traveling. I have a lot of camera gear that I'll talk about on here, but majority of things that you'll see on here have to do with guitar playing. I do have some performance reviews to talk about how some how I play some things when I perform songs, specific songs. So many beginning players and many hobby players don't really have like a loud gigging amp that has like 100 watts or more than that or tube amps. And usually it's because you don't need them. Um, a lot of people that do have bigger amps usually use them for a purpose and you have to spend a lot of money for them because they have a bigger sound with a bigger volume they're also a lot heavier to move around and you can actually fill concert halls with a big sound from these amps. Now the smaller practice amps that you're going to get for like 150 maybe $100 a little bit more aren't meant for loud performances like that. Um, one of the questions I see is people asking me can you use one of those anyways because maybe that's all I have I'm a, I'm a basic guitar player they're saying and I just uh, I just have a small amp what can I do with it so I'm gonna go play devil's advocate, I'm going to say yes, you can use those four performances in a band with certain disclaimers. Uh, something that's that small, hold on, let me get one real quick. Now this one, if you can see it, blah blah blah, this came with my first guitar that I had when I was 13, 14 years old? I was 15, I can't count right now. When I was 15 years old, my parents bought me my first electric guitar. It was a PVT-15 and it came in this case right here. Now this case had its own amplifier in it. It's not a very good amplifier. But it is a 15, 5, 10 watt amplifier in any case. And it did work. It didn't sound great, but that's all I had for a while. So what that did is it actually helped me practice a little bit without, you know, because I had an electric guitar. And you can't really hear it very well unless it's plugged into something. Um, and you just, you know, the sound of hearing it a little bit louder makes you practice a little bit better because it's got a tone. And then you learn to control the strings better. Because if you have like a louder volume or if you have some saturation, which PB calls it, or overdrive or distortion, you have to learn to control your strings a lot more with those. So having any kind of an amplifier helps your practice, helps your, your technical. So the first band that I was in, um, when I went to the first few rehearsals, that's all I had was this little amp and it sounded like crap. And if the, the more you turn it off, the worse it gets. So it sounded really, really bad. And it became very apparent that I needed something a little bit bigger. So I had a paper out at the time and I think I was working at a restaurant right around there as a washing dishes or a busboy or something. And I saved up about $140 and I got my first real amplifier. It was a small 25 watt 110 speaker. It was a PV backstage 25 watt amp. And at that time for my playing compared to this, it was a great little amp. It was, it was fun, it was louder than I think I needed it to be at the time. It wasn't very loud for a band. And it sounded okay, it was a little unfocused, but it was, that's what I had, that's what I could afford. So all through high school, I was playing in a lot of different bands and I would use that to play for shows. Now. Typically that's a practice amp and a lot of people would say, well, you can't, you can't use that. You need something bigger. Well, yes, it would be very nice if we had something bigger. I didn't have any money at the time. So I was playing, that was in the 80s, I was playing a lot of heavy metal and a lot of fast stuff and I wanted to play. So I just used that amp. So I use it two different ways. I would use it without being mic'd. I just cranked it up as loud as you could get and it sounded pretty terrible. <laughs> it didn't sound great. Um, it would feed back really easy. And the louder you turn up a small amp like that, it's like the thinner sounding and the more piercing to your ears it gets. So it wasn't a great tone. The next step I did with that is I started taking a microphone and miking it. And that was a lot better. It made it sound better, you know, through the PA, because the singer's got to sing through some kind of a microphone and PA. So I would just take a, a, a microphone and mic the amp. So that was a lot better. So that could be an option for you. If you have a smaller amp, you could actually mic it. Is it going to sound as good as a Marshall stack in a Mesa Boogie? No, it's not going to. At least you can use what you can for the time being. And for miking techniques, there are a lot of different ways you can do it. Some people hang the microphone straight down, pointing towards the ground, laying it in front of the speaker. Some of them point it at the cone and all these different angles. There's a lot of different techniques and sciences that people talk about that. It doesn't matter. Put it in front of your speaker, not too close, depending on how loud it is. Angle it here and there. Take literally one minute to check it out, see what sounds the best way, and just do that. There's, there's no scientific formula that says this is always the best way to mic every, every amp in every situation with every mic through every, you could just try it. Take a, you know, be a little creative, take a few minutes, put the microphone in front of it in different ways and just try it yourself. Also, another thing, when I was first micing my practice amp, when I was playing with bands, I didn't really think about 
EQ like like well I guess it's loud and it sounds okay but you have to make sure that you can change the EQ on it like for instance maybe a little more bass to make it sound better maybe it's got too much bass maybe I need to put a little bit more treble into it so I can hear it in the mix better above the other instruments or something like that and I'll talk about how EQs can make things sound more prominent without being louder and more in the background those kinds of things put a little treble on it take a little treble off add a little bass take a little bass off change the EQ on the PA that you're micing your amp through and that'll help a lot with making sure that you get a good sound. And if you, the better you sound to yourself, the better you'll play. If you're sitting there playing with a bad sound and you don't like the way it sounds, and it's not the way you're used to hearing your amp sound, you're not gonna play your best. And when you're performing, especially when you're a newer player, and you're performing with the band, you might be a little bit nervous or you're just not as used to playing live. Um, and you wanna be as comfortable as you can. You want it to be in, in the closest to your comfort zone with your guitar and your amp and the right sound that you want to make you play your best. So make sure that you take a few minutes, do the right mic positioning, do the right EQ, and that's going to help a lot. Flash forward to the mid-90s and I started to play a little bit more, I was playing more cover bands and at that point I had gone through a few different amps. I had a Fender Super, I had a Randall Half Stack, I had a few other things um, towards the early 90s and I got rid of them all because I wasn't really playing for a while. Towards the end of the 90s I got a Marshall Valve State. Now it was made by Marshall, but it was it was a like it wasn't really a valve amp like the preamp is, is valves, but it was a solid state um, power amp. And I'll talk about later about the difference between those amps and what's what's better or what people think are better and why they think they're better or not as good, and how it's changing now because a lot of solid state amps is, are really really good nowadays. But different topic. I had a hundred watt Marshall valve state, two twelve, that was really really loud at um, practice volumes. Sounded fantastic at. Uh, uh, practice my practice, solo practice, it sounded great. Practicing with a band sounded really, really good. Performing without being mic'd wasn't quite loud enough. It was just not loud enough to the point where I needed a little bit more and when I would turn it that little bit more, it wouldn't get louder, it would get more harsher sounding and that was not, that's exactly what I didn't want right then. So I always had to mic that amp and realistically, most of the time when you're playing, you're gonna have to mic your amp just for a better mix anyway. So when you see people going with these huge stacks and everything, even if you're filling, especially if you're filling like a big auditorium or a, or a stadium or any place big like that, you can tour with like a smaller amp, a good quality amp, but a, a smaller amp, because at that point you're miking your amp anyways, just so you can mix everything better. So you don't, you never need anything like that. And it's, it's BS if somebody tells you that you need that, you don't. You can have it because you like it. And if you want to spend it, the money for it and haul it around yourself without roadies, feel free to. I did it for a while and it was a ridiculous idea for me, but be happy with your gear if you have it. Um, but I'm just telling you from my opinion, it's totally not needed. I know more than a few people who have toured professionally with a lot of people with 25 watt, 30 watt, 112 professional grade uh, tube amps. So after I graduated and wanted something else from that Marshall, I ended up getting a 50 watt Mesa Boogie Rectiverb 2, Rectiverb Model 2. It doesn't say on it, but it's like a second version of it. I can tell by the a few different things. It's a 112 and it's 10 times louder than the Marshall is and um, for it's installed tube amp. Now, it's heavy as hell, like the, the, the wood on it's like the, the bracing, or not the bracing, but the cabinetry is very, very thick. It's got an amazing speaker and a much higher quality than the Marshall did. The circuitry and there's all hand wired. It's, it's a professional grade uh, touring amplifier, really, really great. Um, I love it, Just, I, I'd be fine with not having any other amp for the rest of my life. Where you really notice it is when you need a clean tone or like almost a perfectly clean tone, like for country or whatever you're playing, or maybe you're strumming because you're trying to playing like an acoustic guitar part, but you just have your electric, so you're putting on a clean sound. And if you need that tone to be really loud, the clean, a loud clean tone is much harder to get on an amp, and that's where you're definitely gonna like the, the tube amps, or if you have anything like that, you'll, big difference, huge, huge difference. So if you're performing with a band or rehearsing with a band, besides just using a, an amplifier or micing your amplifier, there's other ways that you can have your tone very, very loud. If you have a pedal board, sometimes, depending on the way your pedal board's set up, you might be able to run that straight into a PA, uh, some pedal boards are made for that, some of them aren't. Some of them can sound really, really good like that. You can also have like a direct recording unit, like I have this pod over here, this pod, I bought this, I have to do a review on this, it's great. So this might be about almost 15 or 20 years old. Um, I paid $110 for it and I loved it. I moved into an apartment at the time and I couldn't play my Mesa Boogie, so I needed something that sounded good and I wanted to be able to not just play for myself and hear it good, I wanted to start recording and I needed to record, you know, at late at night or without disturbing my close neighbors in this little condo with a loud Mesa Boogie amplifier or even any amplifier if I wanted to do it at 10 o'clock or something. So I bought this. Now this sounds not only fantastic for what it is for 20 years old and Line 6 knows how to make direct boxes really good. I don't like their amps. They have, they tend to have really, really bad 
speakers and they just sound terrible. Like whatever you hear in here is not anything near what the amps are going to sound like. They should be, but they're not. In any case, this is really good if you have something. These are made to record direct, and I've actually performed a few shows and practices when I didn't feel like taking my full amp. I would take this with me, and this worked absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, I'd get like a lot of compliments on how good this thing sounds. So that's another option you might have. You can have something like this to record and practice on your own, and then maybe do some shows with it. However. Uh, some people, some bands frown on doing the direct thing, meaning direct without an amp, just right into a system. But uh, a lot more bands are doing that. A lot of people are doing that. It's fine. If that's what you, like again, back to the beginning. Use what you have. Use the hell out of what you have. If that's all you have, use it. If you only have a direct box and you want to perform, you can do that. Use it. If you only have a small practice amp, well, you're probably going to have to mic it. You're going to need a microphone at some point. Um, and if you don't have an extra microphone, then the other bands can, or you can save that up. But Get a microphone and just mic it. That can work. Is it going to be the best tone you're going to ever hear? No, it's not. Um, but it might be passable. And it'll definitely, depending on what style of music you have and depending on the band, it might be a great solution that you can actually use your practice amp for to play shows and do whatever you want with it. So in the meantime, until you decide to get a bigger amp or a different um, direct box or whatever you're considering doing. So thanks for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts and comments and questions, if you have any, about using a practice amp for rehearsals, for performing, and I will talk to you all very soon. Rock on.